hi. Hi. Well, I know I have reached the right place, and let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to be speaking with our featured guest for this evening. He is known as the jeweler to the king, and much more importantly, a close personal friend of Elvis Presley himself. We're very excited to be speaking with Lowell Hayes. Welcome to the show, Lowell. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to know that I recently received a present from my daughter, and it was one of your TCVs, and I love it so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, um, I mean to I know... I don't know who this is, but it was, I'm sure, my pleasure to make it for you. Okay, this is Tiffany, and I'm Terry. We're father and daughter. Big Elvis fans, big Lil' Hayes fans. And back in the day, I had a knockoff uh, TCV made by somebody else. It turned my neck green. It was terrible. <laughs> but, but yours, to know that it comes from the actual molds. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's only one original mold, and I have it, and uh, cause it, because I made it. Yeah. Uh, and so every TCB necklace that I make comes comes through that mold. Now, of course, we want to talk about you know your relationship with Elvis and things like that, but I don't I don't think a lot of people know about the legacy and the history. Uh, with you, and actually your father. Your father started in the jewelry business in the 30s, right? Uh, yes, yes, he did. Uh, and uh, that was in Houston, uh, Texas, where he grew up. But uh, then uh, he moved to um, Memphis in the late 30s and married my mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then I was born in 1939. And uh, so people ask me, how long have you been in the jewelry business? And I say, well, I was born in the jewelry business. <laughs> now, I've, I've got to know, a guy know. that makes jewelry, are, are you one that wears a lot of jewelry? No, sir. I wear a wedding ring and a tag hoyer watch. Well, there you go. Once you got that ring on, you're hooked. <laughs> that, that's the oh, biggest piece of jewelry well, ever. I'm, you're right. I'm very happily hooked. Was now, the love when, of my life. So. Yeah. When did it come about that uh, your dad and yourself opened up the store in Memphis? Well, um, when when I was when I was born in thirty nine, mm-hmm. uh, my mother and dad were living in a little house they had bought, and he was uh, he had learned all his skills as a jeweler and a craftsman and engraver uh, before he came to Memphis. So he had set up his little shop uh, in uh, the attic of, of their home. Hmm. And uh, so my uh, this is the way his, his business started. And uh, he, he was a repair jeweler. In other words, if you needed to get a ring sized or a piece of jewelry repaired, that's the kind of thing he did. So... My mother would catch the bus every day and ride the bus downtown, and she would walk from one end of Main Street to the other, which was a half a mile, mm-hmm. and stop at each jewelry store, and she would pick up and deliver work uh, that he had done. And uh, so his business grew and grew, and he ended up with uh, an entire floor of, uh, of a 14-story building in Memphis wow. with uh, about about 10 to 12 employees wow. and that's where he was the day he died now that was in in uh in in the late 60s mm-hmm. and uh i had been working for him then for a few years and um so when he passed away i inherited the business um and i opened uh the shop business was not was not my favorite so um, I had a brother, and my brother took over the shop, and I ran, and, and I opened a retail jewelry store, which mm-hmm. is where my business experience with Elvis started, because uh, until then, we we did not advertise, and, and uh, my, my, my business uh, just grew and grew, and Elvis knew it. Well, Dr. Nicopolis was a family friend, and mm-hmm. he told Elvis about me and my business. Right, yeah, because I was going to ask how the the first meeting or interaction 
with Elvis happened, I mean, if he, I guess, with Dr. Nick, you, you, you heard through him, um, but were you just kind of beckoned over for jewelry, or how did you first meet Elvis? Well, the first time I met Elvis, uh, he was, it was, he was in, uh, I, I rode out to Grayson with Dr. Nick, and, and uh, he, Elvis was in his backyard shooting at a target on his dad's office building. <laughs> this is in the city of Memphis. The sheriff's department was there, and they were, you know, oh, oh everybody was having a great time breaking the law and shooting at a target <laughs> in, 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 in the city of Memphis. So that's how I met Elvis and the night I met Elvis. And then, um, uh, uh, so so that was in, in November. And then in December, uh, on Christmas Eve, um, my phone rings after I've gone to bed late, late. And it was uh, one of Elvis's bodyguards. And he said, uh, said, Elvis asked me to call you and see if you could come over to the Memphian Theater and bring bring some jury a jury selection that he hadn't done uh, his shopping for his dad and for his uh, stepmother and for his uh, for his aunt uh, grandmother who was living there and aunt and so I, I got up and and went by my store and picked up some jewelry and went over to the Memphian theater and uh, uh, when Elvis saw me he got up and he he motioned for for me to follow him they were watching a movie Mm -hmm. and uh, i followed him into the this is one of my favorite stories Mm -hmm. i followed him into the men's restroom and (laughs) uh he 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 uh there wasn't any place there wasn't an office or any place you know and so he he goes in the men's restroom and he falls down the toilet he sits down on the toilet seat and he said set your case on my lap oh my so i set my jewelry case on his lap He's sitting on the toilet in the men's restroom, and he bought three really nice pieces of jewelry for me. And uh, he picked them out, and then he said, uh, "We add it up, and, and uh, I'll give you a check. And I said, well, let me just open an account for you. I'll send you a bill. Right. right. So that's how my relationship with Elvis started. Now, hopefully the toilet seat was down. <laughs> it was. It was down. <laughs> Because it would have been bad to have dropped the jewelry down into the toilet. And you, you know, yeah, that would have been that would have been bad. You know, Lowell, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about um, because everybody has an image, an idea of what kind of a person Elvis was, and of course, you know, arguably he is the most famous singer musician in U.S. history. Period. And I think a lot of people buy into um, the image of Elvis Presley. But what was he like as a person? In a lot of accounts I've heard of from close personal friends of his, he was very much just kind of a non-egocentric Southern boy. Well, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty pretty good description of him. He was. Uh, he just when he was when he was just with us with the guys. He was just one up. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't. It, it wasn't anything special about him, other than we made him special, you know. But he he loved to, to joke and play games and do the fun things that we all like to do at that age, you know. Right. Now I'm sitting here laughing because it is true. Elvis was down to earth and a southern boy, but when you first met him and he was doing his shooting practice, he wasn't exactly dressed in a simple way. How was he dressed? You mean when I met him, first met him that night? Yeah, when he was shooting, he was wearing something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was wearing he was wearing a full length ranch mink coat. Oh when he my! Stood up, it almost touched the ground. It had a great big ho- cape, a hood on it. Mm-hmm. And b- believe it or not, it was raining. He was laying in the grass with his pistol in front of him, shooting at the at the office, laying in the grass <laughs> in the rain. Wow. I mean, I knew he didn't and wear... A, I knew uh, he didn't wear his jumpsuit all the time, but, like, when he was not working, he always dressed up pretty fancy, right? Oh, he just... I, I, you know, I guess... I guess you would call it fancy. I... Um, you know, I was, run, I was running a, a couture-type jewelry store. Right. Very high-end 
jewelry store. And he, uh, I wore a coat and tie, a suit. I wore a suit every day to work. So when I started hanging with Elvis, I was where I was still wearing, you know, the, the trousers and probably the dress shirt and maybe just a sweater mm-hmm. I put on. And, uh, so one day Elvis, one day Elvis told Dr. Nick, cause I, I had by now, by the time this is going on, I had had really spent a lot of time with Elvis, and he he told Doctor Nick, he said, "I want you to take him and get him some clothes <laughs> that look like our clothes. When he comes to hang out with us, he looks like a dude, and I want you to I want you to to to, to get him some normal clothes." Wow. So Nick calls me. Nick calls me, and we they took me to a store called Allen Abbott's in Memphis, and and uh. Uh, got, got got me some clothes that I felt very uncomfortable in, but whenever I was going to go be with Elvis, I wore them. So now, it was funny. Going and being with Elvis, from my understanding, that happened a lot because you know once you kind of open an account for him and became his his jeweler. I mean, Elvis didn't just buy jewelry from you, but he invited you out on tours with him, right? Yeah, he uh, he did. Um, I had. I could go on the tour anytime I wanted to and, and see uh, if uh, if I would, well, what I would do is I, I still had a store to run, uh, but I had an excellent manager, so I could leave for days at a time. And my life, I was single. My life was fun. And so I would just hop on a plane and go wherever the tour was. When I got there, there was always a room with my name on the door. So he paid for me, a room every, everywhere. Even if I wasn't there, I had a room. So, um, that I mean, that's kind of the way my life was then. I was just, I had a ball. Man, I would think of now, me. Now, what he said, what he said to me, he said, he said, now, he said, Low, the reason I do this is because he said Vernon has really gotten after me for buying these Cadillacs for everybody. Right. And he said I like to buy things for people, and he said jewelry, uh, I can buy. A, 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 a nice diamond ring for a thousand dollars and give it to someone whereas a Cadillac cost me thousands so uh, if you will just bring a case of jewelry with you I'll pay you all your expenses you can hang out with me all you want Wow! so whenever I want a, a ring or something I just you know I just call you and you come up to my room or wherever you are and so that's how that went and and I just always had jewelry with me that was that was he told me one day he said that's your job with my group. Your job is to have jewelry. <laughs> now, there job, there right? was one time you didn't have any jewelry and you had yeah. to pay the price. I did. That, that, that wasn't a very happy story for me. But <laughs> we, went, we went to a football game together and uh, at the football game he met a hostess that he, that he liked and uh, he didn't want to go back to the house for one reason or another and so we went out to the airport, chartered an airplane, and flew to Palm Springs, California, in the middle of the night. Oh, wow. I didn't have any jewelry with me. Yeah. I didn't take jewelry to the football game, you know. So we get to Palm Springs, and he calls me, and he said, "Come on over. I want to. I want to buy so and so. Whatever. I don't even remember her name now. I want to buy her a, a ring." I said, "Elvis, I, I came to a football game. I didn't come to. I don't have any jewelry." And he said, "Well." That's your job. You're supposed to have jewelry. I said, well, I don't have any. <laughs> so he said, so he said, well, tomorrow morning we're going to the jewelry store, and 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 I and and you're going because I want you to see where I'm going to buy her, and you're and it's not going to be a sale on your books. So anyway, he was kind of scolding me, you know, which is fine with me. I didn't care. So, so he, uh, he he brought you to the competition. He did. Yeah, he did, and he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Wow. You know, and I really I enjoyed it too. When I think back about it, I mean, he he this the kind of, he was just a lot of fun. He would do anything. Now, were you honest, or did you deliberately pick out crap? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no! I didn't actually. I didn't pick out anything. He picked it out. Ah. And he just showed it to me. And he said, "This could have been your sale." Wow! You know, well, you know, he he, you know, whatever. That's the way it went. Though. And, and now, when you say that that he could he could do anything at any time i understand that you guys in, in the inner circle had a little bit of a nickname for him right 
Uh, crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we call him crazy. <laughs> Cra- call him craze, actually. C R A Z, craze. And and what did he think of that? He didn't care. He knew he was crazy. <laughs> now I, I guess you had the name crazy on an ID bracelet he wore. Is that right? It was a tube, a tube bracelet, a, a piece of tubing about the size of a of a of a pencil, and uh, it, and, it, and it was engraved on the, the front Elvis, and on the back we had. We engraved his name crazy. Wow. I and never then he heard had, that. And when he got it, he liked it so much, he had everybody, all of his entourage, have me make one for all of them. So. Wow. Now, I, I wanted to talk uh, about some of the jewelry pieces. Um, the, the tube bracelet, the, that's one unique one that I had never really heard before, heard about before. And there's a lot of pieces to talk about. But let's start with talking about probably the most famous one, the one that held a lot of power back in the 70s, which was the TCB. Now, that came to you. I want you to explain, because I had read, and I believe it's true. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But there's actually, your TCB is a little bit different than the first one Elvis had. Can you tell us about the origin of TCB and how we would know it's a Lowell Hayes TCB? Well, uh, he... The first TCBs were made made in California, and uh, it's my understanding that he ordered twelve of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, they were. Uh, it, he had he and Priscilla wanted a logo, and so they they drew this on a napkin, and they had it made from a drawing on a napkin, in by 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 uh, sports in California. Mm-hmm. So he. Um, so right, right, I don't know where where I don't know exactly where I was and why I didn't get that job in the beginning, but that's another story. Right. So then, as soon as as soon as they got done, he um, he asked me. He said, "Could you make things?" And I said, "Absolutely, I can make them." He said, "Well, the lightning bolt is as sharp as a needle on the end, and I, everybody's complaining about them." Get about them sticking them and yeah. so forth. He said, "I want you to shorten and dull the lightning bolts a little bit, but other than other than that, just make it like this." So I took the TCB he gave me and uh, uh, used it for a mold. Uh, a- after I sh- after I shortened the bolt, showed it to him, and he was happy with it. Then I used it for a mold, and I made the original TCB mold that I still have today. Now a lot of people think he gave away. A lot of them, but he gave away more TLCs and not as many TCVs. Is that right? Uh, no, he gave away more TCBs. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. And he, that was he for, did. Uh, every now and then, there was a, uh, a a a young lady that would get a TLC, but mostly most of Elvis El- El- hung out with the guys more than. With a, a lot of girls, yeah. But uh, the 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 men, the, the, our 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 wives or our girlfriends got TLC. We would Elvis would give them, but but I mean he didn't just randomly give away TLC or or TCB. But he got. But I made him more TCB than TLC. That's how I know which is which was which was true. Now I love this story. Tell us about how you got one of your own TCBs that you made was gifted to you from Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we were in Vegas, uh, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, how the International Hotel oh, yeah. showroom was set up. Mm-hmm. How it was set up. Yep. So there was that big, huge red booth right in front of the stage, and that was always Elvis's. Nobody could sit in there but his friends or you know us so i was sitting in that booth one night and he was uh doing his show and two guys came up on <clears throat> up on the stage and they were on my right as i faced the stage and the bodyguards uh, who are always backstage saw them and they went over and got them and they were escorting them off the stage and all the time this was happening another guy's going up on the left side of the stage mm. and elvis sees the other guy 
and he keeps trying to get his he's singing now just remember he's singing right he's trying to get his bodyguards attention and they're not paying any attention to him and i'm thinking somebody's got to do something so i jump up and i went up on the stage on the left side and i got the guy by the arm and i said you you can't come up here you got to get off the stage oh and he was he was very kind he was very uh, uh, it was easy to deal with him i just turned him around i walked him down the stage and he and kind of headed him back toward his seat and so uh it, it was elvis's practice after a lot of shows in vegas uh to go up to his suite and uh sit around and talk and or maybe sing or practice karate or just goof off with the guys and some and i was and, and some girls and um so he we were sitting there watching him do karate and he and he says and he, so he stopped and he said, Lowell, I said, do you have any TCBs with you? And I said, well, you're in my room. And he said, well, go get me one. So I, that was not unusual for him. I didn't know he was going to give it to I mean, You never know, you know, right? Mm-hmm. right. So um, I, got, I got the TCB and I handed it to him. And I turned around and he said, no, come here. So I came back over there and he put that TCB around my neck. He said, it's about time you had one of these. Wow. And he said... Part-time jeweler, full-time bodyguard. <laughs> so you, you really were knighted by the king. You were, absolutely. Well, you know what? To be honest with you, that's how it felt. Yeah. yeah. It felt like it felt like you were being knighted by the king. when you. That's how I felt anyway. I had been with him at that point in time for a couple of three years, and I didn't have one, and I really wanted one. Uh, so uh, it was just... A, a thrill for me when I got my TCB. Yeah, see that. And I still have it, and I wouldn't take if people are trying to buy it all over the world, and I wouldn't take anything for it. Good for you. That shows your uh, your ethics, Lowell, because if it was me and I really wanted one and Elvis hadn't given me one, I would have been like, well, you know, I could just make myself one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, not, a, not an issue. Not an issue. <laughs> now, I, I realized it was like a spur of the moment. And you ran up on stage, and you stood up for your friend Elvis. Did you think later on to yourself, "God, I could have been killed"? Because that guy well, could have I been. Well, I, yeah. I, I might have had to fight that guy, but <clears throat> by then, I didn't even think about that. Right. To be be honest with you, you know, I'm a I'm a jeweler. I am not a fighter. <clears throat> I wouldn't even know how to fight him, but I would have tried. If he was going to attack Elvis, he would have had to go through me first. Now, Elvis appreciated you so much. He asked you one time, he's like, what can I do for you? Well, now, gonna... if it would have been me, I'd ask for a bunch of ladies. <laughs> but you told him what you wanted, and he gave it to you. And what was that? Well, he, you know, he, <clears throat> we gotta, we've got to go back now in time. <clears throat> he told me uh, somewhere uh, in, in the middle of, of the 70s that he wanted... <clears throat> he wanted a ring that people, when they saw their ring, they would think Elvis Presley. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's okay. So, so, um, so I made I made the first what we call the first TCB ring, and he he liked it, but he it it wasn't it just apparently it wasn't exactly what he wanted, so he gave it to J D Sumner. Mm. So then he then he, uh, he then he he's gonna go on the to Hawaii, and he said, "Lowell, I need a, I need that ring," and he said, um, "So make me another ring for for the Hawaii show." Right. So I made that big horseshoe ring mm-hmm. because I knew he loved horseshoe rings, and uh, he get he gave the horseshoe ring away. So then he says, and then he, he says to he says to me, "Lowell," he said, "I'm he said I I, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but he said." Neither one of those rings were, were, were exactly what I want. I want a ring that when people see it, they think Elvis Presley. That's right. So I, I start. So I designed the TCB ring. I showed him a design of it, and he said that looks like what I want. So I, um, I didn't know any other way to do this. So I bought a piece of balsa wood because I'm a I'm a jeweler in the crest. Mm-hmm. I bought a piece of balsa wood and I made the first TCB ring out of balsa wood. I painted it gold-colored, 
I, I painted the, the onyx in the center black. I put rhinestones in the lightning bolts and the big diamond in the center. I showed him the the design. I showed him things that I think that's what I want. So then I made the ring, and we were going on tour, and he was about to have a fit to get it. So I took it out there the day before the tour to his house, and uh, and, and 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 when I went in, I said, "Tell Elvis I'm here." So they they said, they said Elvis said, "Come up here." And I said, tell him, I want him to come down here. I'm going to see this ring under this chandelier in his living room because right. it's, that's, it's just going to come alive. So right. he came down there, and he sat down at the end of the table where he's serious. And uh, I, I, put, I put the ring on his finger, and he just, I mean, it was like he lit up. Oh, wow. He just lit up. He said, oh, my God, wait. He said, wait till Sammy Davis Jr. sees this. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, He's looking at it, and he says, you know, even Liberace doesn't have a ring like this. <laughs> <laughs> and he just was carrying on about that ring, carrying on about that ring. And he said, I, he said, I know how hard you've worked to do this. He said, I, I want to do something for you. And I said, well, I'd like that white Lincoln you got parked out front. Whoa. It, was a, it was a Cartier edition Lincoln Mark mm-hmm. IV. And never thinking that, you know, I was just joking with him, you know. Mm-hmm. And he says, well, it's yours. Keys in it. So uh, that's how that that's how that all happened. There you and that's go. how the TCB ring, the TCB ring got started. And so I still have the mold. Of course, I have all the molds, but I yeah. have the mold on that ring. And, and they're they're the ones I sell today are made from this original mold. Now you only sold one mold, right? I heard you sold one. I didn't sell one. I gave I gave one to to uh, uh, to. Uh, John Daly, oh, okay. is that who you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what? Well, John Daly, John Daly is a dear friend of mine. He wanted to fool around with that mold and see if he could figure out just how much money a mold would bring. Mm-hmm. That's all we did. We sell this. I still own the mold. Mm-hmm. John has the mold, but it's mine, and it's the American flag. Right. It's the American flag mold. And that's the one Elvis wore his divorce, right? Yeah. 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 Well, there freedom, you know. freedom and all. So <laughs> now, yeah. you, you, when talking about how Elvis just gave you the car, even though you were joking, that reminded <coughs> me of uh, a story I had heard about, where I guess Elvis was very giving, and and there was one time, I guess he he summoned your briefcase while he was on stage. Well, we. <laughs> We were on tour, and uh, we had the show was in Greensboro, North Carolina, and for some reason, I mean, I saw Elvis perform many, many, many times, but for some reason, the the audience what just wasn't with him that night, and he knew it, and he wasn't happy, and after the show, he said, he said we're going to Asheville, North Carolina in the morning. He said I want to go early. So he said, y'all be ready to go early. Well, y'all being me and Dr. Nick and a couple of the bodyguards are all that ever flew on that plane with him. Mm-hmm. So so um, we we kind of huddled and we said, well, you know, there is no way. He, once he goes to bed, he's not going to be up early. So, but anyway, the, we, we got the early calls and the early call was like 9 o'clock. And so at 9 o'clock, he's normally sound asleep. But anyway... We uh, we got so we got up and we got we, we got in our car and we went to the head to the airport and on the way to the airport we passed uh, Dairy Queen and we didn't have anything to eat and so we we said let's pull in here there's no way Elvis is going to be at the airport on time well he was on time he passed us <laughs> so so we so we said uh oh we're in trouble now so he was in not he was not in a good mood mm. and uh, this is one of the few times that I remember him in a bad mood and, and never really didn't understand why but anyway we get to the airport and Elvis uh, is on the plane and he's standing up on the uh, up in the door of the plane and he said I'm going to Asheville y'all are staying here oh. and he did he left us standing on the tarmac oh, and he flew that big monster plane yeah. to Asheville so after the plane left we, we just kind of looked at each other and we said, 
he's going to be sorry. Well, it wasn't very long until the phone rang. It's a little private airport. The phone rings, and the the, 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 the call from the plane was, Elvis is sending the plane back for y'all. <laughs> so he sent the plane back to Ash, back to, 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 to pick us up. And so uh, when the, when, when the plane landed in, in Asheville, the, the, the pilot came and he said, Lord Elvis is looking for you. He wants to see you right away. So I get off the plane. I go to the, we were in a, we were in one of those little, uh, uh, old, oh, I call them old fashioned, old timey motels that had, it was strung out in a straight line and right. it probably had 15 rooms on the first floor and 15 mm-hmm. on the second floor. Right. And he was, he had the entire second floor. There's a police guard on each end. So I went, went up to his room and he said, he said, I'm in trouble. He said, the band's mad at me. I've been ugly. He said, I want to, I want to buy, I want to buy some, where's your case? I want to buy some jewelry. So he bought everything I had. He bought the Sweet Inspirations, all a ring. He bought Kathy Westmoreland a ring. He bought JD and the Stamps Quartet's rings. And that's all I had. And he said, I need, I need, I need some more jewelry. And I said, well, um, I said, my, my brother and, and I were, were partners in the jewelry business. Right. And we had a twin, Bonanza. And I saw, I said, uh, let, uh, I called my brother Les, and I said, Les, how about, he loves to fly that plane. I said, go, go, to, you know, go to the store. We had two stores. And I said, go to, the, to my store and get such and such and such and such and bring it to, to Ash to me. So he did. He brought it to Asheville, and he got there before the, because remember, we started out early. Mm-hmm. Well, this was this was only like 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. So he got there. He brings the jewelry. I, so uh, I, I, I took it to Elvis, and he bought a few more pieces, but he didn't buy much. So uh, that night, the show is uh, on in Asheville. The crowd is wild. Elvis is happy. You can tell he's, he's, he, 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 when he was happy, uh, he was like he was alive on right. the stage. Right. So um, everything was going great. And, he, and I'm, I'm standing over as you face the stage, the sound, the sound controls uh, for the sound system were run by Felton Jarvis. He was over there working the sound control. And uh, I, I always stood over there with him because I could see from the back of the stage, I could see out through uh, at, through Elvis, and I could see the people on the front row. I could, I mean, it was a good, a good place to stand. So right. I'm standing over there, and Elvis comes over, and he's singing the whole time. He never stops singing, but he takes the mic away from his mouth, and he leans over, and he says, "Lowell, where's your case?" I said, "It's right here." He said, "Set it up here." So I set it up on the stage and opened it up, and he got a ring out of it, and he went up on the front row and gave it to somebody on the front row. And he came back until he had emptied the case. Oh, he wow. kept singing and getting jewelry out of the case until there was nothing left. And um, uh, so I, I, I was, I, I, lo- I loved to be able to supply him some jewelry, but he went, I thought he went over over the top this time. And <laughs> I thought, you know, you've, you, you have, I don't know how much money you made on this tour, but you've, you've you you spent a lot of it, I can tell you that. So when the show was over, I ran out and I jumped in his car. And uh, I didn't normally ride in his car. He and Dr. Nick would ride in his car, and I would ride in the, the car right behind it. Mm-hmm. So I jumped in his car, and I'm sitting there. It was a limo, and my seat faced, faced backward, and his seat faced forward. And when he got in, we were knees to knees. And he said, what are you doing in my car? And I said, I want to talk to you. I said, you just, you just blew a lot of money. I said, I am embarrassed. I wish I hadn't been here. I, I, I said, this, this was not our deal. You just, you just really messed up. Wait till Vernon finds sees the bill. <laughs> and he, 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 you know, he does that, does, does that little twitchy thing with his mouth where he <laughs> curls yeah. his lip. Yeah. He looked at me. He smiled at me. He patted me on both knees with both hands, and he said, Lord, he said, I'm going to have to sing five minutes longer tomorrow night to pay your bill. Now go get in your car. 
<laughs> now, 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 see, Lo, you're a nice guy. I would have been, buy more, buy more. <laughs> you should have a conscience about it. So don't feel guilty. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Can, but anyway, that's the truest story I can tell you, as true as, oh, as it can be. Let me ask you a crazy question. I, I know his father, Vernon. I knew Vernon, and I knew J.D. Bull. Great guys. Uh, with his father handling accounts and everything, one person or a few people have always said that Vernon wasn't the best businessman. Did any of Elvis's checks ever bounce? Just just a crazy question. No, I never had a check bounce, but uh, I had I had uh, I had long periods of time where he didn't have the money to pay me. Oh, okay. And I would say, and I, if I was if it was in between concerts or in between the tours uh, and and I'd go I'd go out to the house at night and hang out down there and we'd shoot pool, watch TV, just and the cooks always were ready to feed us. Uh, us being just, just yeah. me and Dr. Nick and some of the guys. <laughs> um, so um, he uh, he would I would see him and he would say he would say uh, he said one time he said, I'm embarrassed, I can't I don't have the money to pay you and I said, "Don't worry about it. I've got it. I've got it covered." Right. So, and I did. He. So I have a, a note signed by, by him, for a hundred and something thousand dollars, that he owed me from one of the times for, uh, in between tours. But yeah, to answer your question, he would get behind, because he, he just he spent all his money as fast as he got it. Right. Or give but, it away. Well, it wasn't a thing that did he didn't have money. It's just. That's a lot of money he's spending, you know, and and yeah, I yeah. Mean, well, I'm that, glad to hear that, that you mentioned life. he gave he gave it away. You know, he tried to give he tried to give more to his fans than he took from. Them. He right. felt guilty for yeah. taking. He felt guilty for the price of the show ticket. Yeah, you know, that's so the way he was. Once in a while, a lot of people talked about Elvis's temper. Now, I saw his temper uh, one night in person, and I think it's a, exactly. Not what people perceive. I mean, it's very over exaggerated. But do you have any other stories where Elvis was in a bad mood and maybe had a little temper they showed? Well, that night in Greensboro, North Carolina, he he had a little temper fit on the stage mm-hmm. uh, of the show. I mean, he insulted the, the Sweet Inspirations. He insulted Kathy Westmoreland and J.D. Sumner and the Stan Scorchetti. He insulted everybody in his band. Mm-hmm. That's why he wanted to buy them all a gift the next day. Oh, there you go. So yeah, was, the night I he saw him, the, uh, he went through like four microphones, and none of them worked. And he got yeah, pissed. Yeah, he and, threw them. Yeah, <laughs> he threw it. That's what he did. He yeah. threw it. Yeah. And then after that, yeah. he was embarrassed. <laughs> he was embarrassed. So he had what? a conscience, that's for sure. But I think his temper yeah. is, you know, over-exaggerated. But he's human, and he had well, one. Well, in kind know? of talking about uh, over-exaggeration or not, like I mentioned at the start of the interview, I think people had an idea of Elvis, or maybe it's what people have created a, as far as thinking of Elvis versus who he really was. Um, I wanted to ask you, Lowell, I, I know you made jewelry, I believe, for the film, but what did you think about the most recent mega incarnation of Elvis's image with the Baz Luhrmann film Elvis? Did you see it? What did you think of it? Well, I, we, my, my wife and I watched it together, and we didn't. We, we I was not impressed at all. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, that wasn't that wasn't his mother that they were talking about. And they were talking about they slammed his mother. But that was his aunt Delta. Yeah. That was the drunk and the cuss did all the cussing. Ah. That wasn't his mother, at all. That wasn't his mother. Yeah, I thought that. You know, too. one of the the way. No, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. his mother. The but but there, the the movie was it was it was okay. It just wasn't. I just, it wasn't wonderful. But now, do you think they? Okay. Do you think they got it right as far as interpreting Elvis as a person? Mm, I don't. I don't have. I don't. I don't know. Mm. I'd have to watch it again to answer okay. that question. Now, yesterday um, uh, we saw the release of the movie Priscilla, based on her book. 
Now, it's pretty negative about Elvis. Are you going to see it? I absolutely am not going to see it. Good man. I'm not going to honor it by looking at it. I'm I love you, Lowell. It. I love you. <laughs> yes. You're, 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 the, you're the man, definitely. She's, she's lost her feeble mind. Yeah. 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 Now, my favorite... I, I uh, wanted to ask just really quick, since we're kind of talking sure. along those lines. Um, I personally have... I love Elvis. Yeah. I was, I've was i grown up loving Elvis because my dad was way into the Elvis thing in the 70s, and, he, and I grew up having Elvis all around me. And as a byproduct of that, I ended up also becoming a major fan of Lisa Marie, who sadly we lost earlier this year. Did you ever make any jewelry for for Lisa? Did you have any interactions with her? I mean, I know she was an itty bitty up until the you know the time that Elvis passed in 1977. Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, the, uh, the, the the one of my one of my stories, which is a, which is a really quick short story, is we were we were in the inter, we were in the uh, International Hotel in Vegas and. It, between shows and Elvis wanted to go to see another show and they were trying to figure out how to get Lisa through the casino without the, the mob of people mm-hmm. jumping her mm-hmm. and uh, I'm standing there and Elvis said give her to Lowell he wa- <laughs> he'll walk through the there casino with her and nobody will even know so I did I threw, got her on the elevator rode the elevator down walked through the casino and out the door and put her in the limo oh. wow. <laughs> now talking but, about uh, so, but, so when she got a little bit older yeah. like <clears throat> like 10 or 11, um, Elvis had me make her a, a little uh, TLC. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, the one I sell now. I call it the Lisa size. And it was uh, uh, it was uh, uh, 14 karat gold, of course, and all diamonds, letters wow. and bolt. And uh, it was a beautiful little piece. And that was her TLC that I made for her, yes. Well, my very favorite woman in Elvis's life was Linda Thompson. And I know she's just recently gotten stuff from you, right? Oh, Linda and I will be best friends forever. I love we her. Shared, we shared Elvis together. I, I guess there was a situation that you made her a chain, but welded it on her body so she couldn't take it off. <laughs> Sounds almost like a chastity belt, Lowell. I know. It said, it said, my, it said my love, my life. I've got the, I've got the mold of it. Wow. And, uh, yeah, we br- she came to the store, and uh, rather than having a clasp, we just uh, welded the chain, the ends of the chain together where she couldn't get it off. Wow, and she thought that was okay, yeah. huh? She didn't mind? I, well, she didn't mind. I don't remember any complaint. <laughs> Man, I wish they'd have gotten married. I really think she was the one for him. Yeah, she would have. He, he'd probably still be alive. I can't, I can't imagine that 80, 80 eight-year-old Elvis, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she was, she was, she loved him and took care of him, and, and, um, I, he messed up by letting her go. I know you had people ask his question, and, and I know it's a, a bunch of baloney, but people actually ask you if Elvis is still alive? Oh, they ask me all the time, and they, in fact, the ones that, that don't ask me if he's still alive are worshiping. Yeah. I mean, they think he's like a god. I try. I try. You know, I'm a Christian, mm-hmm. and I try to explain to him that he's that that I, that I that I hope he was saved and that he's in heaven with Jesus. Yes. But he's definitely not a god. I, yeah. I I talk to people. In fact, I'm well. Anyway, well, Elvis yeah, said he was not all the time. Yeah. Elvis that would say the that there's only one king, and that's Jesus. That's right. That's for sure. He would. Wow. Now, I wanted to mention, I, we had mentioned before you came on the air, but I want to mention it again for all of our listeners uh, to check out your website, which is ElvisJeweler.com. It's a great website. I just recently bought mine and Terry's TCBs from there. Um, I understand, though, that uh, you also sell your stuff through Graceland, right? Oh, yeah. I all the jewelry... Well, I can't say all, but 99% of the jewelry that they sell in the gift shops at Graceland come through me. Mm -hmm. I supply it. And, I mean, if anybody is an Elvis fan and they want to get something, I mean, you would be the man to get it from. Uh, I assume that everything now is is done online. You don't have a brick-and-mortar store anymore? No, well, I do not. 
it's well it, everything's not everything's not done online because I have a kiosk out at Graceland. Oh. And they have all my jewelry there. So if you're if you're going to tour Graceland, you're gonna run into me. It's got a big sign above it that says Lowell Hayes Jewelers. Now I know you had a lot of celebrities through the years, but it even goes on now. You just got done making T C V's for KISS. Yeah, I did. They contacted me and wanted to know if I could make one four inches long. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely, I can. So they bought four sterling silver ones. Wow. Have you seen the pictures? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Actually, actually we follow a a guy on YouTube called Jordan the Lion, and he was the one that got them in contact with you. So, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Does it ever uh, amaze you uh, the the reach that Elvis's impact had? I mean, I don't think a lot of people would put together the fact that a band like Kiss was influenced by Elvis, but they were. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I was. I, 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 I was excited to get to do that for them. I thought it was fun, and then they gave me a uh, they gave me a sound out on on tour that first time they wore it and uh, uh, on stage during one of the performances and and then I got pictures people sent me pictures and so yeah I mean, it, was, it was it was quite an honor honestly to be asked to do it well you've had people like Isaac Hayes man he must have had a lot of chains oh I had Isaac yeah I had Isaac Hayes uh, um, T.G. Shepard I didn't oh t- yeah T.G. TG was TG and I were pretty good friends. Oh, he's I, a nice. He's so nice. Very nice. I guy. knew him before he did Devil in the Bottle. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He he didn't make any money till he did Devil in the Bottle. Yeah. And uh, boy, he's made a lot of money since. He's a good guy. He is. TG's a good guy. And I'll tell you, talking about being a Christian, you know, JD Sumner was so wonderful to me. He was such a yeah. great guy. He he, he I truly believe. Now, before you know, I made them rings. You know the Stamps Quartet rings. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I made those rings for them. Elvis had paid for them, but I made them all rings. Now, do you still yeah. do... I, I know, obviously, for like for Kiss, you did a custom thing. But if, if somebody was to contact you and say, you know, Lowell, I have this design in mind, or do you still do custom pieces for people? No, I, I don't. I don't... I'm, I'm 84 and I just I can't do I just can't do all that anymore. I can't hardly keep up with can't hardly keep up with what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, what's selling now? What I'm selling now are 14 karat pieces. Mm-hmm. The 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 the, tr- the rings that Elvis wore, uh, the Black Star Sapphire ring, the Horseshoe ring. Um, uh, uh, people are ordering the ordering those in 14 karat gold mm-hmm. right. and the TCB ring. The TCB necklace, uh, with a, made from his mold with a 24-inch chain, no clasp, exactly like he did it, is $1,850, and that's the best-selling uh, piece that I have today. Wow. And I'm telling you, those that copy your jewelry, do not buy them. No. Because they will turn you green. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. you can do legally to stop them? Oh, they can... They could uh, the the uh, Graceland uh, Graceland or Elvis Presley Enterprises. They could stop them, but they have to go to they have to go to court. They have yeah. to sue yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, but, but back back in when I first started this, uh, they would the, the the attorney they would have the attorneys just write a letter and that a letter from an attorney threatening you. You know that scares people. Yeah. And yeah. They would quit. Yeah. But uh, no, nobody's writing those letters anymore. Nobody is. Nobody is defending the 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 uh, what's it called? Defending the uh, I'm blank on the word. Right. Uh, defending the legacy. Yeah. Nobody's Maybe. defending it. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, nobody. It, Elvis Presley Enterprises. They're not defending. They just let it. They just let it run wild. So there's crazy people all over the the world that that are are knocking my jewelry off. But yeah. mo- most people that are Elvis fans. Want the, I, I give a letter with the pieces that I make. Yes, yes, you do. That says that I made them and they're from a, the original. Most most people that are Elvis fans, they want that letter. Yep. And and I love Absolutely. the box that comes in. You got a, a great box, and a nice yeah. letter from you. 
and talking about it's being your friend. It's the same box I use for Elvis. Yeah, it's wonderful. Now, I've got to ask you, I was so happy that Lisa Marie grew up and defended her father to the end. And now we have Riley, Lisa's daughter. How do you think Riley's going to do? Lord, I hope she do. I hope she does all right. I have no reason to think she won't. Right, yeah. right. Well, before we wrap up, there was one other story that I wanted to ask if you could share with our listeners. I, I thought it was a beautiful story when I heard about it. The T.C. Weavering 2 story. You gotta get that well, in. we'll get that in, too. But I wanted to have you share the story, Lowell, about the, uh, the Make-A-Wish child situation. Yeah, uh, so um, it, we we got a call that, that it was a yeah it was a make a wish thing, and this child's wish was to see Elvis and 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 so Elvis said okay, so we loaded up in the limos and we went to the hospital and visited with this child and Elvis talked to him and and um, it was just a very dear sweet conversation and uh then elvis took off uh his his cross which at uh, that which was a cross that was uh made with garnets mm -hmm. and a diamond in the center so it was uh yellow gold with garnets uh, that, that that lined the cross and one diamond in the center and he gave it to this child wow. and uh it was just a very Dear, sweet, bring you to tears moment. And uh, I heard later, a few years later, that they they were selling that cross at auction. But yeah. I, I don't I don't know any more about it than that. Well, the and final then, story I wanted to get it is kind of strange, and people may not know this, but and I was lucky. I got to go in Graceland before it opened. Got to see Elvis four times. Knew anybody and everybody. That knew Elvis, now I know you. But I guess the TCV ring that you made for Elvis, if you see it at Graceland, it has a cubic zirconia where the diamond used to be. Why is that? So Elvis called me in the middle of the night. This is within, uh, it was during the last year of his life. Right. He called me in the middle of the night and he said, I want to give Ginger an engagement ring and I want to give it to her before before daylight. I want to give it to her tonight before daylight in the morning. We're talking said, Ginger Alden. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, I want a diamond in that ring the size of the diamond in my TCB ring. Mm. I said, Elvis, where am I going to get a diamond like that in the <laughs> middle of the night? <laughs> and I said, y you know... He said, well, I don't know, but he said, that's what I want, and you're my jeweler, and so you had to do it. Oh, said, Elvis, I can't do that. <laughs> he said, well, he said, I'll t I'm going to teach you another lesson. I'll find somebody that will do it. So he hangs up. So he calls. So I've, I've tried to go back to sleep. In fact, I may have, and calls back. And he said, Lord, he said, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I can't find anybody that has a diamond like that, and I, I need this ring. And I said, well, Elvis, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I can't. I don't have a diamond like that. So he, so he hung up, and uh, and so I couldn't go back to sleep. And I'm laying there right. thinking, what in the world can I do? And then it just hit me. He called him back. I said, Elvis, I'll come out there and get your TCB ring, and I'll take the diamond out of it, and we'll make her I have a mounting that will fit it for an engagement ring, and we can put it together tonight, and I'll bring it to you in about three hours. And he said, okay, come come on and get it. So I go tearing out to Grace, and I get the ring, call my diamond setter. We go to the store, and we may put the ring together, and I took it back out there to Elvis. And when I put it together, I put a, a CZ in, the, in his ring, and uh, I was going to replace the diamond the next week, you know. Uh, but, uh, but Elvis, uh, but he it, 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 it never did get right. placed. Right, right. So and, to uh, all the naysayers so, yeah. out there, there's a lot of people that doesn't believe that Elvis ever proposed marriage to Ginger. You think he did, right? Here's what I know. Everybody, you're right, there's a lot of controversy about this. But here's what I know. He told me the words, exact words, 
I wanted to give her an engagement ring before daylight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was an, whether he ev- ever asked her to marry him or not, I do not know. Right. But I know, I know that I made him a ring he called an engagement ring. Yeah, there you go. So I've, I've got to ask you one last thing, and this is hard probably to put into words, and I'm sure you didn't believe it. What did you think when you heard your friend passed away? Oh, you're right. I didn't believe it. Uh, he, you know, he had he'd been sick a couple of times, and there had been rumors before that he passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, my my my, quite frankly, I was I was sick, and uh, I was in bed sick. And my wife came in and she said Elvis passed away, and I said, "Oh, honey, that's a bunch of bull." He they say that all the time. Well, it wasn't. It was true. He had passed away. Um, it was very sad for me. In the beginning, after he passed away, um, people were asking me to do things, and I just said, "No, he's he's gone, and I'm not. I'm going to leave this thing alone." But then it just got out of control, and I thought, "Well, I, you know." How, so I, anyway, I talked to Vernon, and Vernon said, "Why don't you make TCB necklaces?" So I did, and I sold about fifteen or twenty thousand of them in the first year. <laughs> Uh, gold-plated ones, right? And um, but uh, but no, oh, I I tried to leave it alone, and I just couldn't leave it alone. Well, See, people, know, fans wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you, Lowell, because the thing is, is that coming from a fan. Now, my dad here, Terry, he was lucky. He got to see Elvis in concert three times. Four. Four times, excuse me. And he had an AM-FM radio show back in the late 1970s called Elvis Memories of the King that was right after Elvis had passed. My dad got to, you know, got to know Vernon, and he got to know uh, J.D., and, and he met just everybody around Elvis except Elvis. But for me, I I was once removed because... Elvis had passed uh, five years before I was born. Um, so what you're doing with the TCBs and the other jewelry, it's not just, you know, memorabilia or merchandise. It's something that people who never got a chance to see Elvis can get to make them feel a little bit closer to Elvis. Because it's coming to, from somebody who knew Elvis, was friends with Elvis, and it's it for many people like myself. It's as close as we can get. It's the only thing we can do because we never got the chance to see him. You know, you're you're you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, so many of the of the the real serious fans, like just recently, I made the, the uh, I made a copy of the uh, the chai necklace that's on display at Graceland mm-hmm. Elvis's chai. Yes, I made it. I made one, and I posted it on Facebook after I finished it. It was fifty-five hundred dollars, and uh, I sold it in the first ten minutes to a fan who w- wanted it only because it was the first reproduction after Elvis's death. Right. And so, what happens now with the TCBs is they that TCB is as close as they can get to Elvis. Right. That's, that's as close as they can get, and it's got to be made from my mold uh, that I made for Elvis, and that's. That's just the bottom line. Of the I, I whole mean, thing. It's, you're it's, right. it says something that Linda Thompson bought necklaces for her children. Yeah, a lot of people do that. It's a consolation prize for not being Elvis' son or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a good consolation. I hear you. Well, I, God I bless you. you for doing what you're doing. Oh, He has. God has blessed me, and I, and I, and I loved, and frankly, I love doing. I mean, it's fun. It's it's lucrative, but on top of that, it is really fun. I talk to fans all over the world. And they're the best. Well, all it, over the world. That's kind of a a, a long standing thing because I I understand. I forgot to ask about this. I know we got to go, but I understand that you used to go to the Elvis concerts and you would go outside the Coliseum and and give away extra tickets. So when you were talking to the fans, so that was yeah. I mean, you know, I was. I, I didn't have a job. I didn't work for Elvis. All I had to do was carry jewelry. And I was, you know, to keep from getting bored, I kept trying to find things to do. Uh-huh. And I found out that they were, they always had these extra tickets. And I said, let me have those tickets. 
and I'll, I'll take them, I'll give them away. So I would go outside uh, and wander around, and of course, the prettiest girls got tickets too. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, yeah, that was a, a fun thing that I got to do. Yeah. And it, you know, it was you give you give somebody they're standing out there. This, say this group of girls are standing out there, three or four girls together. They tried to get in. They couldn't get in. There weren't any seats, and you just hand them four tickets. I mean, they just go wild. Yeah. Well, there, know, was, so there was something was about fun. something about your friendship with Elvis where you really trusted him because I guess times when you couldn't be there, you would send the case with him, and he knew the code to get into the case to unlock it. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times when, when we were on tour, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't want to walk around with that case in my hand everywhere, so I would give it to to uh, to his bodyguards where where they kept his where they kept his case and his things. They keep my case, and and if, and then if he couldn't find me, like if I was out of pocket, uh, he'd get he'd bring me Lowell's case. Yeah, he he knew the accommodation was eight thir- eight three nine, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, he would not get it. And if he wanted a ring or a piece of jewelry. He would, uh, our, 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 the way we kept books was, uh, this is kind of crude, but it worked. He would just tear the tag off the piece of jewelry and put the, leave the tag in the case. And when I get back to Memphis, I, I bill him for the tag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving your accent. You are definitely living in Memphis. I'll tell you that. <laughs> definitely. I, I, am, I am living in Memphis. I really, I uh, you, my fav- you got time for my favorite story? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. absolutely. Are you out of time? No, my go, go for it. My favorite story is my 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 father died in uh, in seventy one, and uh, he 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 and I were anyway. He he died in seventy one and and in October. Yeah. And so the next uh, 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 February, when Elvis went to Ve- to Vegas to do a show, I took my mother to Vegas, and. Uh, she, and, and she she had never met Elvis, but she, you know, people were Elvis fans, and so after the show that night, he always he uh, he all he 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 had a party backstage. Cause in fact, this was either the closing or the opening. I'm not sure. And uh, he had a party backstage, so Mom and I went backstage, and uh, there's Elvis out there talking to somebody, and she just went right up to him and started talking to him, uh. and she said, "I'm Lowell's I'm Lowell's mother." And uh, he, 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 she said, I just want to tell you, you know, whatever, whatever. And they got to talking about Memphis and old old times and the Depression. And my mother, my mother, I heard my mother often say, we didn't, we never were hungry, but we there were times when we didn't know where our next meal was coming yeah. from right. during the Depression. Well, she, she and Elvis bonded. And uh, people asked me, how did you get to be such good friends with Elvis? And I said, "Well, I, my mother did that. Right. My mother, bond, my mother bonded with Elvis, and he, from then on, he never failed to ask me about her, uh, uh, my mother." And you so, know, it goes through your parents because I got into Elvis because of my mother. My daughter, who you're talking to, yeah. got into it because of me. It's always through your parent. Yeah, always. I don't yeah. know why. And I pray that you get to be very close friends with Riley. Yeah, I, I now I don't I don't interact with the business end of Graceland very much. Yeah. To be honest with you, uh I don't know I don't know why but they don't they don't they don't uh my my my, my business with Graceland is strictly business. Right. right. Strictly business. It's not personal. I wish it was. It never has been, uh, and I don't know why it's not. But and you never know. You never know someday. Uh, I can get a TCB ring from you, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I got a crafty one that somebody else made, and I want to get a real one. Oh. Yeah. I know, I know. I got to get a real one from the real guy, the guy that made it for Elvis. Yeah. So send, me the, send me your information and your size. Will do. Will Absolutely. Do. I'll send you one. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Well, for everybody out there, please go to the website. Check it out. Um, it's ElvisJeweler.com. And I want to let everybody out there know, if you're an Elvis fan, no matter how 
big or small your bank account is, there is something over there that you can afford. Because, you know, I know a lot of people might think, well, you know, I don't have thousands of dollars and, you know, talking about like $5,500 this and that, I can't afford it. But there is some very reasonable price stuff over there. I think like the, the like it starts at like $45 and up. So there's a little something over there for everybody. There is. It yeah. sure is. It's the ultimate uh, keepsake. It, it's it's a piece of Elvis. What it more is. do you want? It yeah. Is. And Lowell, I want to thank you for for chatting with us tonight, for helping to keep Elvis's legacy alive, uh, for being true to his memory, and for joining us and sharing your stories. It has been such a privilege. God bless you, Lowell. Well, thank you. I hope God blesses you all too, uh, as He has really blessed me. Thank oh, you. He, he's blessed me too. I want you to know that I just got word <laughs> that I'm cancer. I, know he does. I just got word that I'm cancer free. I beat cancer twice now. God's definitely blessed me. Well, that's that's you're giving the right credit to the right place. Yes, I am, and I'm giving yeah. credit to Elvis's great friend Lowell Hayes as well for being who you Thank are you. and keeping the memory alive. Thank you so much for being on, Lowell. You take care. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. You know what? Keith?